This is another synthesis problem. Here's the starting material, and they're asking us to add reagents that will give us this product. This looks like a good test light question. Oh, this is harder than I thought. Should we rewrite the original skeleton as wedged in dash since the beginning? For part D? Yes. Let's see. Let's hold off on that for a second. This is actually, uh, so this actually question is not as good as I thought. This is a pretty hard question. So we'll, we'll just kind of go through this together. The first thing we should do is numbering. For example, if we call this number one, who's the number one over here? One. By the way, these methyl groups were put here on purpose to help you see that these were the same carbon. Those are called landmarks. The instructors purposely put in landmarks in synthesis problems so you can tell carbons in one picture that are the same as carbons in another picture. Those methyl groups are just to help us see that these are the same carbon. And then we can call this 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. One thing to notice then is that we're not losing any carbons. We have the same number of carbons that we started with here. And we have two more. That's right. I didn't bother numbering those because I think I'm going to be able to keep track of those. But you can put in numbers for those if you want. That's a matter of taste. Uh, I at first thought that this was going to be an ozonolysis problem. I thought this was going to be ozonolysis because ozonolysis can make an aldehyde. Right? Ozonolysis can make an aldehyde. But I'm wrong because ozonolysis would have cut carbon-carbon bonds. And this, these have the same number of carbons. So this shows the importance of numbering. One thing that does is tells you how, if you have fewer carbons than you started with. So yeah, this is harder than I thought, because it's not ozonolysis. Now, let's see here. Can anyone see a way to turn this double bond into this? MCPBA. Yeah, MCPBA. And can anyone see a way to turn this double bond into this? That's much trickier. That's going to take more than one step. We could turn the number 5 into an aldehyde just with ozonolysis. But how can we turn the number 6 into an aldehyde? That's going to take two steps. What can we do to turn this double bond into this? So let's try to do a little retrosynthesis. What reactions do we know that make aldehydes and ketones? What reactions do we know that make aldehydes and ketones? I think we only know two reactions. PCC. Yeah, PCC is one of them. And the other one is ozonolysis. So this one's going to do PCC. It's got to be PCC. We just said ozonolysis won't work because ozonolysis would cut the carbon chain. And we don't want to cut the carbon chain. So it's got to be PCC. And will MCQBA only make one? Now that's a problem. That's right. That's a problem because how do we do different things on these two different double bonds? So let's deal with that in a second. First of all, let's think about, so we've decided what we want to do to this double bond. We want this double bond to MCPBA into this. And now we're trying to figure out what we can do to this double bond to make it into this. And then we can try to put those two pieces together over here. So just focusing on this double bond, PCC. Now, what functional group does PCC operate on? Alcohols. Alcohols. That's right. So we want this to have originally been an alcohol. Where do we want the alcohol to be on the number five or the number six? Number five. We want it. No, number six, sorry. Does everyone agree that we want it on the number six? Yes. Because we want the aldehyde on the number six. Here's where the numbering really helps you to be precise. We can't get confused between the carbons. So the numbers are very important. So we need to think of some way that we can get an alcohol on this number six carbon. But we don't want 
VR. You won't get a VR. You don't get a VR without it. You mean a boron? Yeah, oh, boron. hydroboration. Oh, yeah. yeah, sorry, yeah. So what reagents do we want here? BH3. And then H2O2 NH3 NHF. That's the solvent, good. And H2O2 OH minus NH2O. Because we want oxidation. We need the hydroboration oxidation reaction, good. Now, maybe as homework, you guys can go through the whole mechanism for this, but maybe at the same time, we'll just draw what the product would be at this point. We should be getting to the point where we can also draw products. Now, let's not worry about this double bond. Well, let's actually say here, so what's going to happen first? What's this boron going to do? It is it's going to attack a double bond, right? Yes. Now, if it can only attack one double bond, would we expect to attack the left-hand bond or the right-hand bond? The right hand because it attacks the less sterically hindered. So it's not going to right. automatically attack the one on the far because it's a terminal. That's going to solve our problem of only attacking one double bond at a time. When we learned about this reaction, we already saw that the boron is steric hindrance issues and that it's going to want to attack the least hindered carbon. Well, we didn't talk about that, it means it also is selective among double bonds. It's going to prefer to attack the less hindered double bond. So as long as we don't put in excess boron, we don't need to worry too much about attacking this left-hand double bond. It's going to prefer to attack the right-hand double bond over here. And the so let's see what the product is going to be. This, everything the same until five, and then it's going to be a single bond to six with OH effect. Exactly. And you can have a new one. Yeah, and again, let's number each of our products. We so did I make a mistake? Yeah. So we decided that we were not going to attack this double bond yet. So I'm not drawing the whole mechanism on the board. That might be a good homework problem. But we should also know that this simply puts a, an alcohol on the less hindered carbon over here. This is one of the reactions that we've learned. Then we can do, which one should we do first, MCPVA or PCC? At this point, it probably doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. As long as. At this point, it probably doesn't matter. We should but do why PCC we... first, because then we're going to have no, because PCC only uh, works with alcohol, so it's not going to even affect the double bond. Okay. Yeah, I'll look at the answer to see what they did, but I don't think it really matters. They did the PCC last, but I don't know if it makes any difference. They did the PCC last, but I don't know that it makes uh, any difference here. I can't see uh, why it would make any difference here. But anyway, so we can, I think at this point we can do them in either order. Okay, so what are we going to do? I guess we might as well follow the answer key. So what's, what are we going to do to this double bond? MCPPA and CH2Cl2 as the solvent. And so it's just going to, and we shouldn't do wedges or dash because the answer is only in. Yeah, we don't care about the stereochemistry here. We don't care about the stereochemistry because they're not drawing any stereochemistry, so we can go easy on ourselves there. So what's the MCPBA going to do to the 1-2 bond? It's going to turn it into, turn it into this. Water here because water would give us over oxidation. So PCC we know is a good way to avoid over oxidation because it doesn't also have to go in water. Because it's a, we should never use chromate or because it also may get into a keto. Or no, we'll make it into a over oxidation to carboxylic acids. That's right. Except this has chromium too. It's yeah. just we haven't drawn it. We, we don't use the reagents that we show the chromium in because those uh, tend to overoxidize. We use this chromium reagent because if we don't put it in water, it won't overoxidize. So there's four steps for this. One, two, three, four. That's right. Well, this problem turned out to be harder than I thought because I thought it was just an ozonolysis problem. So I actually, so taking a look at this, what were the thought steps? Most important is numbering. Try to find landmarks that tell you which carbons in one picture are the same as the, the, same as the other picture. And then it's like putting a puzzle together. You have to put the different pieces of the puzzle together here. We knew we needed MCPBA for this double bond. And we knew that we wanted to turn this into an alcohol and then oxidize it over here.
One thing we didn't talk about before, we talked about how boron prefers to attack the less sterically hindered carbon in an alkene, but what we didn't talk about is that there's more than one alkene, it prefers to attack the less sterically hindered alkenes. That's something you can put in your notes for the hydroboration reaction. It prefers the less sterically hindered alkene. One thing that we had a little trouble with here was, how can we make a aldehyde? We had to ask ourselves, how can we make an aldehyde? And this is where you have to do retrosynthesis. You have to ask, what ways do I know for an aldehyde? Well, we know ozonolysis and PCC. Ozonolysis is not appropriate here because it would shorten the carbon chain. So we had to use PCC. And then you have to know, what does PCC operate on? Not double bonds, but alcohols. Another question. If there's two double bonds, will MCPBA make them both into um, oxycyclopropanes? Yes. Oh, okay. That's why it's very important that you do this step first. This is selective, but I wouldn't expect the MCPBA to be selective. 